Ladies and gentlemen, Dwight Yoakam. 1987, I was in Bakersfield, California to do a show at the Kern County Fair. While I was there, I was determined to meet the man whose musical inspiration inspired me throughout my life. Though he'd written and performed over 20 number one hits and recorded over 100 albums, he was now devoting all of his time to running his radio stations and being a successful businessman. At one time, he'd played Carnegie Hall, but it had been over a decade since any of us had seen him play live. He was the king of country music and the baron of Bakersfield's honky-tonk sound. But in the 70s and the 80s, people were more aware of him as the co-host of Hee Haw. That man's with Buck Owens. And I remember the sight of the bolero suits and the sounds of those Telecaster guitars barking and howling through twin reverb amps. Buck Owens was born in Sherman, Texas in 1929. His mom and dad were poor but hard-working sharecroppers. During the Dust Bowl years, the Owens family moved westward. Young Buck learned to play guitar from his mom and later played honky-tonks around Mesa, Arizona and in Bakersfield, California. He wrote songs and played a lot of session work. Merle Haggard said some of the hottest lead guitar ever heard on a country record was played by Buck Owens. Eventually, he signed a contract of his own with Capitol Records. Second fiddle, to your new love Second fiddle reached number 24 on the charts in 1959. You got me under your spell again. Buck moved to Tacoma, Washington, where he met a teenage fiddle player named Don Rich. It was the beginning of an electrifying collaboration. They recorded Under Your Spell again and made it to the top ten. Dreaming those dreams again. Buck and Don had an almost telepathic connection with each other. When they returned to Central California, Buck and his new band, the Buckaroos, took the Bakersfield sound to new heights. Together again. With one number one hit after another, Buck Owens seemed to own country music. He played everywhere, from Carnegie Hall to the Fillmore West in San Francisco. But then in 1974, a tragic motorcycle accident took the life of Don Rich. Buck was devastated. His heart just wasn't in it anymore. He sought consolation in his weekly performances on Hee Haw. When I met Buck Owens that day in 1987, we talked about bolero suits and telecaster guitars, and we talked about Don Rich. Don's memories seemed to make him come alive. He joined me on stage that night, and we played a medley of his old hits. As the crowd came alive, so did Buck Owens. He saw that people hadn't forgotten who he was or how great his music will always be. I'll be forever grateful to Buck Owens. His music is what inspired me to be who I am today. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Buck Owens. Gone. So, on behalf of the CMA, Buck, 
Quite Congratulations on being inducted as the newest member of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I am. You deserve it. I'm. I'm it's been that's a long it. Time coming. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, Dwight. And and uh, I, you know, I got. He told me I don't got very long to talk, so I got to talk fast. Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> will you hold? Will you hold that for me? You hold, I ain't gonna say what I said. I was gonna say. I changed my mind. You gotta, you gotta be a good guy. They said. I, I'm gonna. I wanna real quickly thank and remember the great Don Rich, ab above all and everybody. <laughs> My sister Dorothy and the great Ken Nelson out in California. And uh, you know, my hometown people where I was born in Sherman, Texas. And uh, you know, if I mentioned everybody, it'd, it'd go all the way from here to Bakersfield. The list would be that long. And by the way, there's a bunch of people sitting out here at Crystal Palace. I don't know what they're doing, but they're watching. Hi, guys. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, uh, also, I want, to, I want to thank the great Harlan Howard. Harlan, the greatest. <laughs> wow. Next, ne next year, we've got, we've got to have Harlan Howard in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and have I forgotten anybody? My sons, my sons, uh, Mike and, and uh, Buddy and, and my nephew, Mel. And, Good Lord, all my little ill, Ill no, no, I didn't have any of them, did I? <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, I thought what Ray said was appropriate. You know, about, about time, he said that, didn't he? He also stole my line, that Susan Lucci line. I told it to him backstage. <laughs> now, here, here, Jack and Joe McFadden, I want to tell you, that means hurry up, doesn't it? Well, J Jack McFadden and I have been together for 33 years. He's the only manager that I've ever had. And I... And I, 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 and I want to tell you, about 30 years ago, he said, my man, one of these days, I'll be seeing you in the Hall of Fame. And I said, well, Jack, that's yeah, big talk. He said, I'll do it. And through the years, he told me, he said, I'll be seeing you in the Hall of Fame. I think they got afraid I was going to die, and they went ahead and put me in there. You know that? <laughs> what do you think? Whatever the case. Finally, in capital letters, thank goodness you're in. Well, <laughs> and deservedly so. Mr. Thank, Buck Owens, thank, ladies and gentlemen. Thank gentlemen. you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jack McFadden. Stay with us for songs from Trisha Yearwood, Vince Gill, and Allison Krauss in Union Station. And next, Terry Clark.